Wow, no my hiding my fellow classmates, 89 to 93. Now, wherever you are, I hope you're nice and warm because where I am right now in Wainuia Mataloa Hut, it's bloody freezing. Would you believe we even had a little bit of snow falling at the top of the Wainuia Mata Hill. So hope you're all nice and warm. Uh, after a day or day or two's break, we're back again for another episode and really thankful for this one because our classmate that we're about to uh, catch up with is leaving. He's heading, he's in New Zealand at the moment in, in Auckland and he's heading to Scotland on Monday. So we've got him um, at a really, really good time and really keen to hear his story. So what I know about this fellow, proud Taranaki man coming from the uh, Taranaki heartland a great rugby player yeah i remember him well for playing rugby at stream another boarder so uh, lived his life in, in the boarding hostel and has done very well post silver stream it's my great pleasure to introduce what are you up to now video number 35 the one and only the one and only jared dwyer kia ora jared thank you eugene how are you Hey, I'm wonderful. And we just had a quick catch up, man. It's it's great to see you. You're looking good. Cheers, mate. Uh, yeah, it's been a, a really good year so far. Oh, look, it's, it's great to catch up and thanks for joining us. As mentioned, you're heading off to Scotland soon and, and we'll hear a little bit more about that. So I, I do appreciate your time as I know the rest of the guys will. Look, let's, let's take it back to when you first came to stream back in... Um, well, just, uh, well, uh, 89, of course, when we started. So, Jared, just remind us all, how many years did you end up doing? Um, you were a boarder. Where did you come from? And do you remember your first boarding bay or hostel up there in Redwood? Uh, let me see. I were five years, obviously, um, from 89. I came from uh, Kakaramea, just south of Hawara little country town uh, to the big city of Wellington, uh, the enclosure of Hutt Valley. Um, yeah, Redwood, I was uh, just a bit two bays down from Greg Moki and uh, Richard Murphy, because I remember the building shaking when they used to do their wrestling fights <laughs> and dump each other on the ground. Couple of double and, w, WWF moves. Yeah, I can't remember the bay exactly, but it was the first one through the second door. Uh, that was it. Wow, awesome. And um, so for you, when you came to school, um, did you have any family connections with Stream? Did, did, was it mum and dad that came down and did they literally drop you off? I mean, how, how did it go? Yeah, look, uh, my father uh, and his brother had uh, been to Stream um, back in the, must have been 60s, I think it was. And uh, both my brothers had been to Stream uh, prior to me being there. Actually, my uh, middle brother was there in the sixth form, I think, when I first arrived. Uh, and he left in that year. Right. So you had some prior um, knowledge and experience of what to expect? Uh, I had prior whispers and words. I'd actually come down to the school quite a bit, dropping my brothers off for school. So I had a pretty uh, good understanding of what the place looked like. Um, just have to uh, pause there for a minute, maybe huge. I've got a electrician in here doing a little bit of work. Give me a second. Yep. No okay, problem. you stop that drilling. There we go. No problem. I'll just get rid of this. Now, we were in the same third form form class, the Mighty 3PB, with uh, Father Peter Blake. Do you remember that? Sorry, I repeat that question. Now, we were in the same form class, the Mighty 3PB, in our third form year. Do you remember that class with uh, now, Mighty Father Blake? The Mighty Father Blake, and I think was one of our uh, maths teachers, Peter Ellis, at that point in time? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember that year pretty well. That was a pretty claustrophobic um, uh, hallway, I think, leading into some of those classrooms. There used to be a lot of uh, shenanigans going on down there. <laughs> yeah, someone else mentioned that too. Now, do you... <laughs> What did you what did you do the immediate year following Silverstream? So 94, what did you end up doing? Well, look, I um, took the, I think, most uh, sensible route that every country boy would do after leaving the city and took myself off to Massey University to pursue a uh, qualification in agricultural science. 
Um, and I it actually, I thought I'd take it a step further and do veterinary school. Uh, so I did pursue that for the first six months, uh, but it was a pretty tough cut. So I cross credited to ag science. Wow. And, and um, so this leads into occupation and what you do now and what you've done over all those years. Did that lead into what you're currently doing or, or not? Well, yeah, after, after um, graduating, um, I went to, back to Wellington, actually. And uh, it was quite funny because I took on a couple of temporary roles, thought I'd get a bit of work experience before going into the uh, sort of agricultural field. Uh, and uh, did sales for turners and growers down there for a year or two um, and then took a role in the dairy board thinking that was pretty close to agriculture and um, started to tend more towards the accounting side of things actually so uh, when I uh, then went overseas actually pursued a uh, accounting qualification and never went back to agriculture. Wow awesome well done to you I mean you know, like most of us, we, 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 we may have an intention to go one way and then life changes and, you know, we, we, we end up in many different places. So good on you, Ben. Yeah, I thought, look, I think the main thing that drove the accounting qualification huge was um, uh, I didn't have any ticket, mate. And uh, I arrived in the UK in, in about 2000 and there was a mini recession there in about 2001. And I was a contractor and a lot of us were getting laid off. My wife was pregnant at the time so i needed to really lay down some certain <laughs> certain tickets and work experience and accountancy was just the one that uh it just did fit the bill at the time yeah 100 percent. so tell us have you been acting as a, and working as a um as an accountant and what sort of jobs have you been interviewing for over in scotland yeah so what i do mate i do more commercial finance uh so as opposed to statutory accounting on other other side of that more management uh, commercial finance uh roles so I uh, did quite a bit of time in uh, banking uh, for about 16 years and uh, spent the last few in insurance. And I just enjoy that part of uh, kind of more strategy around finance and uh, product development and that kind of thing, right? So it's a, it's a the more funny thing, to be honest. Yeah, I think you're underplaying it, to be fair. The, the guru that you are, I bet you're, uh, you, you're one of these flash guys, aren't you? They're doing they do the business. No, I like the dirty work, huge mate. To be honest, it's all it's more fun. <laughs> hey, now listen, you were a great rugby player at school. Did you pursue rugby at all outside of um, uh, school, college? Well, yeah, I played in a few really good teams, mate. I played for the Cloacres of Western Suburbs uh, when I was back in Wellington, working down there. That was a, a, a clearly a high performance team. Um, I spent a, a little bit of time. At uni, actually played for a club uh, called the Gentlemen's Club. Now, it's not to be underrated. I think probably every player of that team was a first 15 member from Silver Stream, Wellington College, Rongatai, or St. Pat's Town, wow. or some other schools in Hawke's Bay. So we uh, practiced once or twice a week at Fitz, and then we went across to play on the weekends and probably cleaned up most games with about 40 points. Uh, winning the competition for the year. <laughs> it was it was a really fun time, mate. Really good fun. Oh, I bet, I bet. And it sounds like um you had some definite some talent in that team too. Oh uh, well, yeah, we just did a lot of class in there, obviously much better than myself. I felt like I was just on the bench uh watching some high quality players at times. But yeah, that no, was top class, mate. Good fun. Oh, sensational. Now introduce your whanau to us, your wife and your children. Yeah, sure. So um, I've got uh, my lovely wife, Sarah, um, who is British. Um, and she is actually now sitting back in Scotland as we speak. Um, my son, Daniel, who is 17, uh, is with her uh, back there at the moment. So they've migrated ahead of myself and my daughter. Uh, Lauren, who is currently at school uh, as we speak at Takapuna Grammar. And Lauren and myself will be joining uh, my wife and son in Scotland on Monday. Yeah, you're just saying quite a process now, um, prior departure, COVID checks and all that sort of thing. Yeah, you're, you're ticking all the boxes. Yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, mental logistics, um, just paperwork, obviously, mate, but it does not make traveling easy. Yeah, 100%. So um, uh, I haven't been to the UK yet. So what, where do you go these days? Is it a direct flight or do you stop one place and, and tell us what, what's the journey plan? 
Uh, look, the journey plan is to stay as green as possible. So New Zealand is a green country. The only connecting country between here and the UK is Singapore. Okay. So if I uh, do the old leapfrog into Singapore, which is green uh, currently, and then land in Heathrow, uh, then you can enter the country quarantine free. You just have to complete a 48 hour COVID test uh, post flight and you are free to roam. Wow, 48 uh, hours, yep. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. You just self-isolate in your own accommodation. Uh, if you were in a, going through an amber or a red zone, it would be completely different. Wow, okay. Good for us being green. Good for us. Good for Singapore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Now, here's a question for you that some fellows have struggled to um, just give one example of, and it's a memory. It's something that's stuck with you all these years of your time at Stream that maybe that you know, you've held on to or this just keeps popping up in your head. You'll have heaps, but is it just something that you remember that um, you can share with the rest of the guys of, of your five years at Silverstream? Yeah, it's a funny thing, right? Um, the, the little things like the poplar trees in summer, just playing cricket under the poplar trees, you know, that, that funny dappled shade, that really, really uh, luminescent green that just surrounded us, right? Uh, or you're playing rugby under in the winter. But just that kind of, that, that area, I don't know why. It just, when I have memories and I kind of think of it, it just pops up in my memory quite strongly. Well, that's amazing. And obviously, it's, it's related to sport, right? Because clearly you're enjoying yourself and you're, you know, doing something cool. But uh, that's just kind of a, a, a memory that flashes quite regularly. Yeah, what a great memory. I was actually at school um, was it last weekend and weekend before. I was watching my son um, play football. And he was in the Kapiti College first 11 playing stream. And mm -hmm. it's, it's changed a bit now. I'm not sure when you were last there, but all the land behind the cricket nets now is all um, sports field now. So it's all been reclaimed by Silverstream. So it was previously behind Homer Compassion. And it's all turned into um, um, uh, soccer and rugby fields. It, it's, it's, I mean, it was always big. It's massive mm -hmm. now. It's it's huge. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was probably farmland. I think that was in between uh, Jenny Marnie's house. So we used to wander across with Stacker uh, at lunchtime. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I think I think you're exactly right. But yeah, anyway, it's yeah. still still pristine, really well maintained. It looks really beautiful. Um, you know, they 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 really look after it really well. Still. Great. Now, do you keep in touch with anyone from our year extreme? Yeah, look, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time post um, with a lot of lads here and there, right? Um, used to spend a lot of time with Gravy. Oh, sorry, Gravy, uh, Stacker. Um, Melee occasionally, uh, a few of the lads. Got up with Conor McHugh recently. Um, but it's sort of here and there, depending on where, where people are. You know, it's, uh, I've been a bit transient. Uh, at times, so keeping up with all the lads, uh, it doesn't always happen, right? Even in Wellington, depending on which company you're in and where you're living in the uh, area, depending on who you ran into. 100%. I mean, even us Wellington guys versus seeing other Wellington guys, I mean, not necessarily seeing them for years. It's just how it is. We mm. all took different paths and, and different um, whatever, vacations, transitions. But I tell you what, if we did bump into each other, it was like yesterday. Yeah. Uh, which was always something pretty special with, I think, um, streamers in particular. Uh, mm. Very, very tight. You could spend decades apart, which which some of us will. But when we catch up at the end of July, I, I get the feeling it'll be, you know, like yesterday. Oh, look, it was a real shame when I found out that it was uh, booked in. And I did check the dates. I was hoping it would be really early in July. But, um, yeah, so I was, I was pretty disappointed to find out uh, that I was going to miss the date. Um, well, we'll, so obviously yeah. I have to place my apologies, but um, I'm sure you guys have a great time. Well, we're disappointed too, mate, because um, this is the first time I've actually spoken to you since leaving school, and and I relish the opportunity. But um, we will definitely have a toast for you, mate. You're, you're one of us in your travels. You're never forgotten by by our year group. Um, I mean, I have very fond memories of you, G, and I'm sure the rest of the guys do too. As we come to the end, have you got a special message to the boys that'll be watching this video soon? Well, look, if uh, James Henderson or uh, Corker are uh, uh, obviously watching, uh, pay attention, mate, because I believe they're both based in England somewhere. So I'll uh, try to make contact in the next uh, few months to see if we can hook up. 
Wow, that's wonderful. Now I can tell you, James Henderson's bet he's in Wellington. Uh, oh, is he? Okay, yeah. I, th- I thought he's in England. Okay, got that wrong. Yeah. No, no, you've got Corker. Corker's definitely over there. You've got some others over there, like Howie, um, uh, doing well over there in the UK. But yeah, James is running a bar in uh, in, in Wellington here. Um, okay. So, so we hope to get him on board. But, mate, from all of us, all the best with your travels um, back to the United Kingdom. Um, shame we couldn't see you, but at least we can try and keep in touch with you. And you never know when we'll get the opportunity to catch up again. So, on behalf of all of us, travel well, my friend, fellas, Jared Dwyer. Thanks, bro. Cheers, huge. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. No trouble. Bye.